find out tonight where you and what place that you are with God. There's a ship that you're going to be on. I had something else in mind, but God changed the mind. It's good when God can change your mind, isn't it? Huh? Isn't it good when God can change your mind? When you got your mind set on something you don't want God to change, that's when it gets bad. But I got to thinking, God, there's multitudes of people. I mean, there's thousands of people go to church night after night, day after day, week after week. Yeah. Carry the Bible. Go to Sunday school. All those things. But yet they never come to the power and the knowledge of God's supernatural anointing. Word that unlocks chains of hell, looses demonic powers, opens the portals of heaven. But yet, to them, they can't see what they carry and hold. Jesus spoke a parable. And people couldn't understand what he said. And he took his disciples aside and said, It's for you to know what this means. You see to some people anything that God has, they don't understand it. It's a parable. But I believe that we're a special people when God reveals His Word to us. Don't you? Say amen. Now I want to take us back a few years. Let's go back a few hundred years and see if we can find our place and maybe where we're at right now. I see a preacher, man of God, a prophet. God speaks to him and he says, man of God, I need you to go preach for me a message. He says, God, I'll go. He said, I want you to go down to Nineveh. And I want you to cry out against that city. Because it's a wicked city. Yes. Sin and unbelief and sin. They don't nobody down there worship me. And this is what I want you to preach. Thus saith the Lord, 40 days in this city of fall. Cried against it. But I see this preacher saying, God, I can't go down there. God, you don't understand. You don't understand that's a wicked city. I don't want to go down there. I want them people to kill me. Yeah. I don't want to go down there and cry out against sin and all this stuff that wickedness. So you know what he done? He found a ship that a lot of people's on. And it's called the ship disobedience. And he sailed away from God. Or that, that he thought he did. Ladies and gentlemen, a storm came. I'm going to tell you something. A lot of storms come because of disobedience. Because people on the wrong end and they're on the wrong ship. And all of a sudden they're out there somewhere running from God. And all of a sudden the storm begins to come in. They say, my God, what's happened? Probably no doubt the stars was out and it was a clear night, but down in the bottom of that boat was a man that did not want to obey God. Now I'm going to tell you something. There's a lot of storms in the churches today throughout the United States. And I'm going to tell you the reason why. Because preachers have become preachers for people instead of preachers of God. You can't be a preacher for people and preach the Word of God. You become a people's preacher, you preach what they want. You become a people's preacher, you can't preach what God tells you to preach. But when you're a man of God, and God's ordained your life, and you're willing to stand for God, you'll have to speak what God tells you to speak. Ladies and gentlemen, there's not but one thing in this last days that can move and help the situation, and that's to let the Word of God go forth. Let it go! It's not a time that we hide this thing and say, God, I, I can't do it. I can't do it, God. I mean, listen, we live in a crucial time. It's a, it's a critical time. People just seem like it's in a fast-paced world. And, and everywhere you look, the, I preached one time in a place. And I told them, I said, everything's going so fast. I said, fast food restaurants. 
and all these things are raising. I remember my little hometown. Well, there wasn't nothing like that. One year, about five fast food restaurants. Everything's in such a fast pace. Nobody has enough time to listen to God. Nobody has enough time to obey God. Nobody has enough time to just to stand still and hear what God's got to say. But here's this prophet. He's running from God. This storm comes. Hey, maybe some of you here tonight on that ship. I don't know. But he wouldn't obey God. And the storm came. He knew why the storm came. When it looked like there wasn't any hope, he said, there's one way that this thing can be settled. He said, you've got to get me off the ship. He told me off this ship and said, this thing will cease. He said, I'm the reason. I'm the reason. Nobody wants to point their finger at herself and say, maybe I'm the reason why that God's not doing anything. Oh, we want to blame it on everybody else. That's it, man. Blame it on the preacher. Blame it on the prophet. Yeah. Blame it on the evangelist. Well, like I said the other night, might have said it last night. That man brought that young man to those disciples and demons was in him. They didn't cast him out. He come back to Jesus and he said, Jesus, Jesus, said, I brought my son to your uh, disciples and said they couldn't help him. He's got a devil and said they couldn't cast him out. And Jesus put it back on the man. He said, if thou can't believe, yeah. if thou can't believe, all things is possible to them that believe. He said, it's your disciples, they can't help it. But Jesus looked at the man and said, man, if you can believe, if you can believe, all things is possible to him that believes. Amen. Say amen. amen. You can blame it on everything else. You can blame it on all the things around you and, the, and this society that we're living in and all these forms. But I'm going to tell you something. If thou can believe, all things is possible to him that believes. Ladies and gentlemen, what's wrong with people today is they just don't know how to obey God. But God demands you to obey him. Now here's Joel on this ship of disobedience running from God. But I'm going to tell you what happened to him. What's going to happen to a lot of people. He cried out of the belly of hell. When they throw him overboard, you know the story. All of the children knows the story. That great big fish, God prepared to swallow him up. Down to the depth of the deep, seaweeds tied around his neck in the belly of a fish. And he cried out. 